Welcome back guys. This is Anirudh from Scholarite Media and this would be my ninth video on JavaScript for beginners. Before I start with today's topic, I would request everybody to please like and share our videos with your friends and also subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. The topic for today's discussion is ECMAScript. When I say ECMAScript, I'm sure that you must be having a lot of questions right now as to what ECMAScript is, how is it in relevance with JavaScript. I'll give you a brief introduction as to what ECMAScript is and how it came into existence. Back in the 90s, when the internet began, JavaScript played a very crucial role in its development. JavaScript was involved in development of most of the browsers. So the team of JavaScript developers had to come up with a specification. The use of this specification was to roll out new features in the improvement of the JavaScript language. This specification was governed by ECMA and the specification itself was called as ECMAScript. So basically ECMAScript is a set of rules or protocol that the programming language follows and JavaScript is the programming language. The first major release was made in the year 1997 when ECMAScript released its first version which they called as ECMAScript 1 or version 1. From 1997 till 2011 ECMAScript has been releasing a lot of features in the progress of JavaScript. The last major update in the version of ECMAScript was the ECMAScript 2015, which is also called as ES6. There were a lot of features that were released in this version. Some of these features we are going to discuss in this video. We will be discussing what a let and const keyword is. Let us quickly switch back to the coding ground and have a look at it. Welcome to the coding ground. Here we will talk about the ES6 features that were released in the ECMAScript 2015. The two features that we would be discussing in this video are the let keyword and the const keyword. When I say these are the two new features of JavaScript, you must be thinking what was there before this. So before the let and const keyword, there was something called a var keyword. There were certain disadvantages of the var keyword and that is why JavaScript came up with let and const keyword. Before we write any code now, I would like to inform you that we would be writing this code on a JavaScript file and not on the HTML file. In the previous videos, we have written JavaScript in the HTML file and ran it on the browser. This was because the browser had a JavaScript engine which would understand our JavaScript code. What if we wanted to run our JavaScript file on our computer and not on the browser? To do that, we need a similar engine which was present on the browser which was the V8 engine. The same kind of engine needs to be present on our local machine to run the JavaScript file. One such engine which will help you to run your JavaScript code on the machine is the Node.js engine. Node.js is similar to the V8 engine present in the browser and this will help us to run JavaScript on our local machine. I have already installed the Node.js on my machine. I'll help you with the steps that you need to follow to install it on your machine. To install the Node.js engine, you need to go to the nodejs.org website. In the website, you will have a download section. Within the download section, you will have something called a LTS, which is a long-term support. You'll have to download the Node.js version from the LTS. Based on your operating system that you currently use, download the latest version of the Node.js software. I have the Windows operating system on my machine. So I had downloaded the Node.js for the Windows OS. You can download based on the relevant operating system that you currently have and install it on your machine. After installation, to check if Node.js is properly installed, you'll have to run this command on your PowerShell or on your command prompt. The command is node hyphen hyphen version. Once you run this command, you will see a certain version being displayed. I can see that the version is 14.16 that is currently installed on my machine. This would vary based on the time when you have downloaded this version. Now that we have the Node.js application installed on our machine, we can directly write our code in JavaScript file and run it on the Node.js machine. Coming back to our ES6 features, 
Before discussing about the let and const keyword, let us talk about the var keyword. Before JavaScript came up with the let and const keyword, the variables were declared only using the var keyword. To declare a variable with the var keyword, we would write syntax which looked something like this. I am declaring a variable with the var keyword and the name of the variable is variable1. I am initializing this declared variable1 with the initial value of 15. This was a syntax to declare and initialize a variable. The major disadvantage of the variable keyword was its accessibility outside of the block scope. To understand the block scope, we'll have to understand what scopes are in JavaScript. When we talk about scopes in relevance with the var keyword, there are two types of scopes that come into picture. The first one is a global scope and the next is a local scope, which is also called as functional scope. If I declare another variable var2 and assign it an initial value of school, this variable would be in the global scope of this file. This means that the variable var2 would be accessible from anywhere in the file. The next scope is the local scope, which is also called a functional scope. To understand local scope or functional scope in terms of the var keyword, let us create a function called abc and declare the same keyword var2 but initialize with a different value. What would be the output if I tried to access the variable 2? Would it be welcome which is within the function abc or would it be school? To understand this, let us go ahead and run the program. To run this application using the node.js engine, you will have to write the following command which is node followed by the app name. You can see that school is being displayed when I run the application. It means that it is accessing the variable which is declared in the global scope and not the variable which is declared in the local scope. When we talk about the local scope and the global scope in JavaScript, it works pretty much fine. If you declare something within the local scope, it is not accessible outside of the local scope. For example, we declared a variable var2 which was welcome and that was not accessible outside the function. But what if we declared something within the block scope? Definition of a block scope would be anything that is declared within the opening and closing flower bracket is a block scope. Let us declare a variable var3 and assign it a named scholarite media. What do you think the output would be if I try to print this variable var3? Let me go ahead and run the same program to understand the output. You can see that the output is scholarite media and that comes from the block scope. This was a major disadvantage of the var keyword and to overcome this problem, JavaScript came up with the let and const keyword. In the let and const keyword, if you declared anything within the block scope, it was not accessible outside of the block scope. Let us see how we can declare a variable using the let keyword. You will have to use a let keyword similar to the var keyword during the var declaration followed by a variable name. I am creating a variable of the name color and initializing a value red. This is how you declare and initialize a variable using the let keyword. I'm creating a block scope now and declaring another variable with the same name color but assigning it to a new value blue. Now I would be printing the variable color. What do you think the output would be? Is it blue or red? Let us go ahead and check that. You can see that the output is red which is present in the global scope and not something that is present in the block scope. But if you declared it with the var keyword, the output would be blue. This is the problem that let keyword solved. Coming to the next feature of ESLint which is the const keyword const keyword works similar to the let keyword but the only difference would be its initialization if you declared a variable using the const keyword and if you initialize it to some value then you would not be able to change its value let us discuss this with a coding example if i declare a variable abc using the const keyword and assign it to a value of 50 and then if i try to print this particular variable abc 
you can see that the output is 50. But what if I try to reassign this variable to 100? What do you think the output of ABC would be? It gives us a type error which says assignment to the const operator. So reassigning to an already initialized const variable would throw an error. This is how JavaScript came up with the let and const keyword in order to rule out the var keyword. In our programming examples from now on, we will try to focus more on the let and const keyword and not on the var keyword. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful to you, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel Scholarite Media.